uh, everybody. Uh, you know, I have to uh, give three gratitudes. Number one, the hospitality. I think uh, it, it's just amazing. People are so warm and welcoming here. Uh, it, it's just great. The second thing is uh, Salik from restaurant Bukharin. It's the best dish that I've had in the vegetarian side. Uh, and it reminds me of my mom's cooking. You know, something so simple, just rice and milk, and you can elevate to that level. I'm actually salivating, you know, I want to have another bite. I had one last night. Uh, the third one is, uh, you know, a big shout out to each and every one of you, the cybersecurity warrior of Saudi, for raising the level of Saudi cybersecurity from the global cybersecurity index of 70 to just number two in only six years. You know, a huge round of applause for everyone you know, who's working very hard every day and night to make that happen. And, and thank you to Cyber Secure, Saudi Federation of Cybersecurity Programming and drone technology, especially to IR Mokabir uh, for making it happen, and the Informa attack crew who's been working very hard. And even though there was rain, they keep the show going on. So I just want to give a shout out to Informa team for a great job. Thank you, guys. So, uh, you know, it was a, a December morning in Philadelphia city. Uh, it snowed the night before, so when you walk, you see the white snow on the roads, on the buildings, and everywhere you're going. But the wind was very chilly, right? So, so you're really layered up, you get into the office, and, and I grab that cup of coffee in the cafeteria. You know, hot cup of coffee, steaming, and I was smelling and enjoying. And, and my boss just walked up to me, and he said, hey, Irvin, can I talk to you for a minute? And, and many of us know, you know, that's not a good sign when your boss comes and asks you like that. Uh, so we sat down. I said, Todd, sure, let's sit down. And, and he gave the news that, hey, we are being acquired by a global cyber insurance broker. You know? So, so just looking at, hey, there are ranges of emotions that goes through in your mind when you hear something like this. Your company is being acquired. On one hand, you're excited. Hey, we are going global, right? So there's a lot more to do, you know, bigger responsibilities, more work. But on the other hand, does that mean we'll have to get rid of some people? Right? Does that mean we'll have to change some of the technology solutions? Does that mean we have to work differently. You know, and, and those were the thoughts that were going through my mind, and those were not new emotions, right? So I was with Citigroup for about a decade. We acquired many companies, you know, been part of that. Post that, I worked with Experian, you know, uh, so we've been part of few mergers and acquisitions going through. Worked with Verizon, you know, we had one of the biggest acquisitions in the tech industry when we acquired Yahoo. And then, of course, uh, Exper uh, Willis Towers Watson, that's happened. Amerisource Bergen, Fortune 10 Healthcare, we acquired $25 billion revenue business from Europe. So M&A is sort of part of our lives that continues every day. And today, I'm going to share some of the learnings that I have in that space with you. Uh, and my hope, you know, we'll walk through what is an M&A mergers and acquisition, get a brief on what are the different stages of the M&A, pre-merger, during merger, post-merger. But the most important part is, what are the takeaways that you can take home and actually implement that? So in the end, I'll share with you a roadmap and the initiatives that you can conduct in your session. So, so why do the M&A in the first place, right? So there are three big reasons you want to work on mergers and acquisition. The first one is the data breaches. 
a data breach can cost company, and we know from experiences, up to $350 million. And it happened with Yahoo and the Verizon merger. It can cost a major breach impact, as we can see it happened with Marriott Starwood breaches. And then PayPal, when they connected with the TOI network, uh, millions of records were lost. The second part is the regulatory impact of the M&A. Right? So if you look at Facebook and WhatsApp M&A when it happened, they were fined 100 plus million dollars for not meeting the requirements on the data privacy side. We had other examples, Anth Anthem and Cigna, the regulators actually blocked the acquisition to happen because of a regulatory impact on the privacy of the data. We have examples on IT and culture integrations where companies spend billions of dollars, tons of manpower, huge investments, and then only to separate along the way. Daimler Benz is a great example of that with Chrysler. AOL Time Warner ended up spinning off from there. And HP on autonomy, $8 billion were lost because of that M&A. So that, it's, it's really crucial to look at the M&A's pieces from the cybersecurity perspective. So, so what is an M&A? So M&A is primarily, whether we know it or not, every single year, the top business management is looking at how do we make more money and how do we reduce money. And one of the pieces that gets discussed is, do we need to acquire somebody or do we want to be getting acquired by someone to continue to be a viable business? And then starts the three major phases, you know, the due diligence part, the closing date, and once the closing happens, how are you going to integrate the businesses together? Right. So those are the three parts. Now, if you look deeper, you know, these teams and roles and responsibilities get assigned for M&As, and because it's illegal and business intelligence, you know, those selected leaders got to sign the NDAs for the non-disclosure of those pieces. And nowadays, we have security on the table for doing those work. So, so what can go wrong? You know, there are four bigger mistakes that I have seen uh, in my career that most companies make and end up losing money, losing people, losing customer, losing revenues. So the first one is being unprepared. The second one, they go, they take blind risk. Third one, the integrations never work. And post-integration, they never have, they have insufficient protections in place. So just looking deeper, what does the first one, you know, uh, being unprepared means and what we as a security professionals can do to be preparing for that phase? I, so there are five major pillars that you can anchor your entire practice on. You always start with what's the current state of cybersecurity. You look at the doing the assessment for them, doing the pen testing. The second part, you look at the laws that they have to follow. What are the regulatory and compliance laws? Are they based in Europe? Are they a healthcare company, are they a technology company, or a telecom company? What needs to be done there? A third one is, what infrastructure actually do they have? What kind of legacy systems they are operating with? What kind of architecture they are following? Are they still on-prem or they are already fully on cloud? What's the mix of applications? And the next part you look at is the third-party risk. You know, that's where majority of the breaches are happening today. And you want to make sure that the company is ready and prepared for that part. So what are some of the examples of not doing these things? You know, one example is the company is always want to keep the acquisition confidential. But the challenge with that is if you don't bring security to the table, then how will you fix things? How will you get to know the problems, right? 
And, and that's where it's crucial to bring security early into M&A due diligence so that we can uncover potentials. One example is the Verizon Yahoo angle where we asked for a simple question, did you have any security incidents or breaches? And it turned out that question was worth $350 million on that day plus any future legal liability the company was protected from, any future class action shoots that could come our way the company was protected from. So it's really crucial to bring the security on the table so that they can ask the right question. Another example, you know, we are not even allowed to do minimum due diligence. Right? Let's just go do it, we'll tag along the security and it'll happen. A great example of that is the Marriott Starwood merger. When that happened, Marriott discovered 50 million guest records were compromised. Had security been on the table, that would have been uncovered and have saved the company tons of not only money, but also the manpower and the brand impact and the guest experiences that they had to go through. Another example is, you know, people. When, when people hear about M&A, what kind of emotions that comes around? And some of those are, have anxiety about the emotions, right? How to think about, will I have the job that I, I need to continue to support my family, or do I need to start looking at somewhere else? And when they start doing that, the first thing they do is take the information they have out with them, whether it is the codes that they have written, or the strategies they have, or the pricing, or the sales and the marketing contact information. You know, it starts flowing out of the company right away with the news. And then lastly is, you know, we don't complete any risk assessments for those M&As. And it's, if you don't know what are the risk, what are you going to protect? So it's really important to make sure that you know, the security teams are engaged earlier and are able to perform the assessments and help management, help business prioritize the high risk first. So just moving along, the second is the blind risk. You know, many a times we are asked to do things and we do them very quickly, but it can have a great financial and business disruption impact. So that raises the question, what can security do when the blind risks are being taken? And there are five steps that you can carry on again. Uh, you can always start with how do we operate in terms of security policies? How do they operate in terms of policies? And how do we bring that together? It always starts from policies, then it goes to standards, then it goes to controls. And the second part is, you're gonna have new family. You know, new family in terms of IT and infrastructure team, not only where you're working, but there's another family you're getting married to. So how do you bring those pieces together, align their interest, and, and mitigate the risk there? And the three other part are, you know, my favorite thing is people. Being the technology organization, we always focus a lot more on technology and getting the things done. What we forget is it's not just about technology. It's, a, it's the people who run the business. It's the people who run the technology. So how do we think about the culture? How do we think about the emotions? And how do we help and support them? You may be getting acquired by a company that has low cybersecurity awareness index, and, and you might have a higher mature journey. That doesn't make you superior anymore because you're part of the same family, and the focus should be, how do I bring my other family up to the level and ride this wave together? And there's a lot of things that we can do there. Uh, so the next part, you know, just some examples on this part, how it happens. You have sensitive data once you are during the close time that needs to be exchanged. And, and the appropriate roles and responsibilities are not defined. And as a result, what are threat actors doing? What are hackers looking for? 
they know that this is the vulnerable time. The moment the merger is announced, all eyes are on you. And, and good people eyes are on you, but the bad people eyes are on you too. And that's when they get in and try to bring out things. So let's just make sure that we have appropriate controls to manage those infiltration. And then taking the blind risk from cloud side, you know, one company on-prem data center, other company working on the cloud side, how do you bring it all together? How do you unify configurations, standards, policies? So having that solution to look at in a unique eye is super critical in that area. The last part is the systems and the technologies that we are giving access to for the people. We really want, the management is going to push you to do the work sooner, so we need to make sure we are not allowing unauthorized access and the information sharing, despite the pressure. Uh, so the third mistake that I see a lot is the integration. So you have announced the merger, you're collaborating with your new family, you know what needs to be done, but now the rubber hits the road. You really need to bring the networks together, the systems together, the applications together, and not just the technology function, but also the HR, the finance. People need to get paid, right, using the same system. Um, so marketing and the sales pieces. So if the integration is not correct, if the integration is not done right, that can result into a huge disaster. And we know from experiences it happened at Daimler Benz. It happened at Starwood and Marriott. It happened at the PayPal and TIO side, right? So common mistakes I see uh, in this area going on, what can cybersecurity do? Make sure the policies are working what you have. They are effective. They are actually executing on something. Ensure that the management is looking for the new risk after the merger happens. And then, are we doing and complying with the laws and the regulations that are there? So those are the three things really to make sure you know, we are focused on. And then, of course, a few examples. You look into two lands needs to be integrated. It looks good from the management side. Hey, what's the big deal? Just bring the networks created together, but they don't know there could be duplicate IP addresses that are happening. They don't know system may not talk to each other. So what do we do as a professional? We got to find a better system. Hey, let's do it using some of the new technologies like Zero Trust Network, where we can bring the users together and deliver results much quicker. You have different IT environments. How do you bring those environments together and, and really those technology solutions, licenses, everything costs money. So how do you standardize those costs? How do you align those in trust and, and make the integration happen smoother? Uh, the fourth and the last one is the insufficient protections that are in place. So now we had the announcement, we had the closure, we started working with our family, we are doing the integration of networks, systems, technology, people, processes, creating them, allowing them. The most crucial part is, is it working? And how do we make sure cybersecurity is focused on the right things? We look at these five things again. We go back and check the standards and controls. We check the policies. We make sure the risk assessment process is highlighting the right things to the business leadership. And then we move on to incident response and recovery. Incidents are going to happen. It doesn't matter what level of controls, what level of investments you put in. Because why? Because you don't control who's going to come and attack you in your home. All you control is, how do I secure my home? How do I keep my entrance door closed? How do I keep my windows locked out there? And that's what we need to do when we acquire a company. Together, both families are secured from that perspective. With that, uh, I'll head out to uh, a quick uh, 
there are a couple of examples on the inventory. Do you know what the companies have? Are there any overlaps that needs to be addressed? If we don't do the discovery, we are going to end up with multiple solution conflicts at both technology and the people level. If we have the biggest part is the threat actors. They are looking at us at that point in time. They know we are vulnerable, so we need to make sure that we are looking at evolving new threat actors and how to secure from them. So with that, I'm going to give you three slides. You know, what does all of this mean? What can you take home? How do you build your M&A strategy? How do you make sure that you're looking at the right thing? Here's the roadmap that comes with that. So the very first thing, the moment merger is announced, the cybersecurity leaders and the team should be looking at these five things right away. You've got to follow the law. You've got to know what needs to be done, what's at the weakness part. And you've got to see the third party risk, very important. Look at the incident response capability. Are they mature, not mature? What do they need to do? The day of close, typically 90 days you know, from the day of close, you've got to group together with your new family members and go over how do we unify the policies? How do we unify the integration? How do we unify the controls? How are we doing on the IT systems? So our brothers in infrastructure and IT team and the application teams, they really need to come together and work on it. And once you're done with that, 90 day onwards, the job is not finished, it just started. So you start looking at, you start looking at how do I evaluate my program? How do I build a continuous feedback? How do I encourage people to, to speak freely and highlight things that are not working so that you can take care of them before they become a big pain? And just quick, uh, you know, what initiatives you can run into organization for each of those phases, it's highlighted right there. Uh, so you can have pre-merger, the top five initiative, during the merger, and then of course you want to make sure post-merger, these are the five initiative in your post-merger plan, and of course your ongoing management. Uh, I hope this really helps you look at M&As uh, differently, and it gives you the roadmaps and the initiatives that you can take back and actually apply in your day to work. Thank you so much, everybody. Great to be here. Thank you so very much, Sherwin, oh, for such an exciting session. Thank you.